Hey, Tim here. Uh, I'm going to do kind of a review, kind of walk through a little bit about some how I've rigged it and some minor mods that I've done for my fishing kayak. Uh, there's some videos out there that are very helpful, uh, but when I was shopping, not as many as I would have hoped for. So this is the Kingsport 12 sit on top fishing kayak by Sun Dolphin. Uh, I purchased this at Dunham Sporting Goods. Uh, it's also marketed as the Boss 12, and I think at uh, Walmart as the Ozark 12. So um, I just figured maybe a little more data for someone trying to make a decision, or maybe they can get an idea of uh, pros and cons uh, to this particular model. Uh, maybe it would help. There, there's some good videos out there, but there's definitely... Uh, not as many as a lot of the other major brands and for an entry point kayak um, I think it's a good starting point I, I've been pretty happy with it I've had it uh, this is my second summer with it and hopefully you get a little helpful information and enjoy this video and give you some ideas for like I said the pros and cons how I've rigged it um, some minor modifications and things of that nature so I will walk you through here and uh, hope it's helpful thank you Okay, as I said, this is the Sun Dolphin. Um, my model from Dunham Sporting Goods is the King Sport 12, also known as Boss 12, Ozark Trail 12 foot fishing kayak, etc. So, um, we'll kind of talk about some of the pros and cons here. Um, for the money, and I got this for about $450 on sale, I'm very happy with the investment. Uh, in the cost of it for what it is it's uh, it's extremely stable you'll see that on other videos I'm sure you almost have to work to try to tip this thing um, I've had it out in some light white caps some pretty major wind never had issues uh, it's a tank it's heavy uh, I'll have to look up the specs I think it might be a close pushing 80 pounds unrigged um, that weight and the tri hull is what I think makes it very stable. Uh, it's also slow. It's slow to paddle, uh, but uh, you know there's trade offs in anything, and it's not been a negative for me. So I will start here and kind of run through some of the pros and cons that I've experienced on this. Okay, probably the biggest pro I can find to this is this seat. Uh, it's a dual position seat as you're probably already aware you can drop it down low or this is in the high position uh, Just pull these straps to adjust the back. It is extremely comfortable. I have back issues with some bulging discs uh, And I've spent six seven hours straight sitting in this thing uh, And virtually no no back pain even for me whatsoever. So the seat is outstanding I think the height is fine here in the raised position uh, I'm 6'1", about 230, uh, and it's it's the right height for me. Of course, the uh, adjustable you know foot pegs you can line them up for whatever your body length is. Um, I really haven't stood up much, but it has a handy little strap here to an assist strap for standing up when you're in there. Uh, but the seat is probably the number one uh, positive thing for me with this canoe. That and the stability, of course. Okay, another positive to this is with this size, uh, you've got a lot of space to carry whatever cargo, you know, accessories, things that you need. Uh, it's been great for me. More space than I actually need, uh, but for fishing, uh, which is obviously the primary use, it's it's been outstanding. A great platform. Uh, I probably use it more than anywhere up in the Superior National Forest, northeast Minnesota, uh, kind of Boundary Waters type lakes. Listen, you're not going to portage this thing uh, in the Boundary Waters for sure, uh, but I, I like to hop around the entry point lakes or lakes outside the Boundary Waters in the National Forest, and it's been a great platform for that. Uh, targeted primarily smallmouth and walleyes, but uh, you know, I'm sure it's a great bass boat too. I just don't do a ton of largemouth fishing uh, where I am. Uh, I live in southeastern Wisconsin, so uh, the, the the size and uh, 
capacity of this thing is 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 really a positive as well uh, again with this size it's a tank you're, you're giving up speed it's slow to paddle uh, I've got a couple other kayaks these pelicans you know can paddle circles around this thing but uh, you know that's not what I bought it for I wanted a, a stable solo fishing platform for sometimes big water for targeting smallmouth and walleye and it's been great for that okay some of the negatives um, I think Sun Dolphins quality control may leave a little bit to be desired um, this I've seen videos with people taking a lot of water on the, the the back decks and the platform there are four scupper holes there's two kind of up by where your feet go here and then there's two under the seat I just plug those things with a scupper plug and I really haven't had any water issues inside the canoe maybe if you're on a river and it takes some 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 water on it, it might be an issue um, there are no scuppers in the, the back portion of the deck so I, I could see water maybe building up there if you are uh, I think people are just doing a little bit different than I am that usage or or types of water that they are uh, taking on a lot of water it's not a problem that I've experienced okay inside the hull of the boat water will get in there when I mentioned that some of the quality issues uh, everything collects water uh, you know screw areas whether it's on the rod holder whether it's around the, the storage well whether it's uh, along different clips and things some of them weren't tight I went through siliconed around each hole and tightened them down and that made a huge difference in the amount of water that was actually getting into the shell of the boat uh, so that would be a tip that I have before you even take it on the water is to uh, go through and, and silicone and, and recheck the the tightness on, on all these fixtures now one thing with the Kingsport 12 it's different from the Boss 12 or the Ozark Trail it's the same boat the difference is in the back here with my Kingsport model you get a storage hatch this is not watertight uh, put a dry box in here if you're going to use it but uh, this storage well on the other two models there's a recessed cavity up front here that has the same storage well. So you'll ask, you actually have, uh, was it four and a half front and back hatches? And there are recessed areas on the front, one on each side here for rod holders. They come in the other two models. They do not come in this model. So you can kind of see there's, there's one here and, and one on the other side. Um, before having experienced this canoe, canoe, before having experienced this kayak, uh, if I would have known that difference ahead of time, I'm sure I would have said, oh, well, I'm going to get the other one with those couple extra features. After having used it for a little over a year, I really think they're unnecessary for me personally. Uh, I'm not going to ever, for my usage at least, I'm never going to store a lot of stuff in the body of this boat. Uh, as I mentioned with the the front and rear storage decks there's plenty of room for anything I'd need it's not a necessity for me and, and that's probably the biggest entry point for water into this whether it's in the rain or what have you so I wouldn't use it I don't want rod holders up front here I, for me personally it interferes with my casting uh, I really don't think I would utilize them they would just be there so it's not a negative for me but for you it's something you should take into account uh, when you're making your decision so those are really uh, as far as I'm aware the only differences uh, between the three models uh, the Kingsport 12 does not have that front hatch in the front rod holders the other model other two models do okay one other complaint or question I've seen is in the scupper holes People say they don't understand why there's only, you know, I don't know, it's a little over a quarter inch, drill, why they're not drilled out all the way. Um, part of the issue with this is this is a two-piece hull construction. You can kind of see where the weld is. There's actually a lip here where the two halves of the boat are welded together. Down in here, the four scupper, actual scupper holes, those are also weld points where they kind of melt the two halves of the boat together. So those actually help with structural stability 
uh, and things of that nature. So um, there's a reason for them, uh, I believe. So I personally would not drill those out larger for any reason. I haven't found a need to yet, but you can see, you know, to scale, here's how small they are. Uh, I haven't had a wa water buildup issues in the boat at all. They've drained plenty if I ever needed it at, at that dimension. And I want to keep the two halves of this boat together as much as I can. So let's just kind of do a walk through the boat and I'll point out things that I think may be of interest and we will go from there. So starting at the back of the boat, you've got drain holes. You've actually got one in the front and back, which is nice. Handles, there's a front and a back and kind of centered on each side. So four handles, they're very durable. Uh, I think they're gonna last quite a while. Uh, the only issue is if you're carrying this from the side handles on a single one, no matter how much you tighten, these little things will spin and they kind of raise out of this recessed cavity. Uh, if you can see that they're they're built into, I just twist them back. It's not an issue. Um, some stainless pad ties I added here. Uh, this is part of my anchor trolley system. I'll get back to that later. So it comes with the bungees in the back where I just kind of put your standard crate in, which I set up a little bit different and I'll cover. So as I mentioned, you have rod holders, one on each side in the rear, kind of backward facing. Um, not bad. I may mod something up, uh, maybe onto the crate where they're carried a little bit more horizontal. Uh, every once in a while, if I've got this full of rods on my back cast, I may forget and uh, actually smack a rod. So again, this is the storage compartment that comes on this one. Uh, this bag dries out. I think they mark it as a dry bag. It is not. Water is going to get in here. It's going to get wet. Just carry a few things. I don't really have the need to put much in there. My, my crate carries most of my stuff. So. There's other videos you can see the seat as I mentioned it's in the high position uh, it can drop down to a flush mount and this actually folds all the way back and there's a pad eye back in here that this thing clips on to uh, like for travel there's pros and cons so technically the seat is not removable for for travel uh, but it drops down flush inside the body of the kayak and bungees down I've never had it move or shift or bounce around so in travel it's been fine on each side of the kayak, uh, you have paddle holders. I don't really use these. I think for for myself, this thing's both big enough where I can slide the paddle up under the front bungees, kind of lay it along an edge while I'm fishing and it doesn't get in the way. A little bit quicker access. So here's the two handles uh, on the side. There's one over there as well. Uh, I'll explain later what these are for. It comes with gear tracks, one on each side here. I don't know what that is, maybe a 10 to 12 inch gear track. So it's fit, um, was it Yak Attack and, and different vendors. I haven't had any issues with fit. I did add a little Scotty track here for some accessories for myself personally. So it's actually quite comfortable. There's kind of a adhesive foam pad that's under the seat and in your main standing position, uh, which has been nice. Hasn't been too difficult to keep clean. This is where that front hatch would be on the other two models. I actually have a backpack kind of tackle box and I just kind of lay it on, lay it in here, clip it in. Uh, one thing with, uh, with kayaks, clip it in or eventually replace it. So pretty much everything possible or that I can care about is clipped in. So if I did overturn, which I never have, uh, it, it's hopefully retrievable. Uh, but uh, I don't have a problem without the hatch. You could put a Plano box in here. I actually just lay my whole backpack uh, tackle box in this in this position, and it, it's easy for me, at least at six one, to to reach and pull it back to the seat when I want to get in there. Again, this is where the uh, rod holders would be on the other two models. Just a recessed cavity, ready to be cut out. Um, the front deck has you know bungees here to, to hold down gear or what have you uh, the front handle the front drain plug so uh, there is a comes with a real cheap rod holder and a receptacle here uh, it'll stay in and stop from spinning but it can easily bounce out I don't trust it I never use this myself uh, I've got this you know system system here to to use rod holders that are locked in and you know you twist these to turn it or 
or take it out. Uh, so this is kind of useless for me. All right, let's talk about this seat. I mentioned that it was extremely comfortable. Uh, I think that's a fairly common um, feedback that you'll, you'll get on this. There is one negative. Uh, compared to my, my Pelicans, the plastic, the HDPE on here seems softer. It's not as rigid. Um, it's only happened to me a couple of times, maybe, I don't know, two, maybe three times, but it happened the first time I had it out, which was very nerve wracking. And that is when it's hot out, as this thing warms up, it gets more flex. And on the front here, I don't know if I can show it, there's actually, the seat rides in these uh, brackets, there's a piece of steel that goes down under the floor up the other side that it's bolted into. I'm guessing there may be steel inside the hull that it's all bracketed to that I'm not certain of. In the back, they just screw these onto the hull. There's no steel holding it. So as this boat warms up, it gets softer. The, the hull will flex out and there's enough play that allows these holders to actually slide out and you'll drop down to the, the floor of the kayak might be some stability concerns um, definitely is going to freak you out and uh, probably not the safest thing in the world there's a lot of great videos on there about people who have put uh, rod ties all the way across or they've made their own steel support for the back actually i emailed sun dolphin they're aware of this and for free they'll send you kind of a modification on it basically what it is it's some longer screws and some thicker washers that you put behind this thing. So you take these off, put some larger washers with the longer screws and put it back in. Basically, this bra these brackets, you're moving them in. I think it might be an eighth of an inch, but they responded within like three days and said, here's the fix for it. They're sending the parts. They haven't arrived yet. I've got another fix so far. I'll probably do a combination of the both. So um, let me go around the other side and show you my quick, cheap fix here so in order to prevent this from dropping down what I did is I made a block of the right height I just happened to have some covers that came on I don't know if it was a cot or a patio set um, that the height seemed to be about right for this project so I just took some L brackets and screwed the two together I put a little bit of rubber on the bottom so it doesn't slide or it's not as loud and I've got a paddle clip that I just screwed to the top. So what this allows me to do is I slide it in, the paddle clip snaps perfectly to the rear rail of the seat, and then I just turn it and rest it on the, the floor of the kayak. So if this thing did spread, there's really no way for this thing to drop down. It's uh, it's actually secured. It doesn't weigh anything. You know, it's easy, you know, easy on and off. Uh, so that's been a quick, easy fix for me. It might be better to make two of those, one for each side. Listen, you don't need perfectly sized plastic. You can take a chunk of four by four. Or I'm sure you guys can come up with something even more creative. But that's my seat fix uh, for this, for the dropping issue. And I will be installing those uh, thicker washers to kind of act as a bushing and slide these in a little bit to, to prevent that going forward. All right, now let's kind of, I'll run through and talk about how I have this rigged. Hopefully you guys can get some maybe helpful ideas on how I've rigged out this particular boat. So in the back, we'll start with the usual kayak crate. Um, I've just got a carabiner with a clip to the handle. So if it ever, you know, spilled, uh, I wouldn't totally lose it. But I just stretch the bungees over the corners and I can almost lift the whole boat, this heavy boat with this this thing just with the bungees in here so it's been totally solid a lot of great uh, videos on YouTube about the retractable clothesline reel for an anchor system uh, inside um, there's some cool ones where they can put uh, tops and trays and different things I've just got this Kelty day that I've got a dry box some gear ties some marker buoys and um, hopefully I need that for my walleye my stringer things of that nature I keep an old 90s ruler for measuring the fish if I need to in there and uh, a spare paddle. I don't carry a whole lot more. I've put on two rod holders to the front of this. All just everything's on just with zip ties, uh, 
heavy air gauge zip ties. Um, I have a folding net that uh, if I'm carrying multiple rods, I may take this out, I may uh, pop it in the back, built-in rod holder, lay it on the side, what have you, you know, however you want to rig, it's your option. This one, for uh, mounting a, a, a GoPro, you know, it can go higher than this. It's just a selfie stick. Uh, I put one of these floats on for uh, fishing rods and I noticed it fits really good, so I just put a piece of foam in the bottom to cap it. I've got it strapped down and uh, it holds it pretty stable. I can run a line down into here with a battery if I want extended life, but I just use a selfie pole uh, to mount the GoPro on the back to kind of get an angle out the front. I don't know if that showed you. So uh, again, I've got a carabiner with a bunch of uh, leashes that I'll clip onto my rods or whatever I want to hold on to here. Um, the, I carry a like a bailing sponge just in the back of the seat uh, and that's good enough for me. So for my anchor trolley system, first thing I did, first mod, and I was really nervous, it was my first kayak, I, I didn't want to drill a lot of holes, so I just took some aluminum bar, bent it to the shape of uh, the recess here, and drilled a hole, it comes down to the pulley, the normal system, I've got it clipped on with a ring, and it goes all the way up to the front, a different bend, but I did the same thing. Uh, probably at the end of the season, I'm just going to get maybe a yak attack, uh, trolley system and, and screw into here. I've had this over a year. I'm not shy about drilling holes in the boat anymore. You can see what happens with this softer plastic. It's actually kind of twisting and bending. And I think at some point that's going to fail. So I'm going to pop this system out. Um, but it's just maybe a MacGyver-ish alternative if you don't want to drill a lot of holes in your kayak. I only added two holes. One right next to the, the clip here that held the bungees. And uh, I wanted to secure this down in two points, but as you can see, it's still kind of kind of bending um, with the softer plastic. So, uh, but it's totally functional. Uh, for me, I'm anchoring in a lot of uh, rocky bottom areas. So uh, traditional, I have a traditional small, you know, folding anchor, um, but I like to use these kind of mesh bag anchors that I just fill with rocks. So. I've got uh, a little bit of line up to a carabiner that I clip onto one that retracts in here. This has in heavy winds and even light white caps, just filling this small bag with rocks has been enough to hold this kayak in place. So I've been very happy with this system and if there's one thing in the Boundary Waters area that there's plenty of, it's rocks. So I just kind of collect them from the shore before I go out. And it's been great for me. So if you'd like to know, you know, the reason or the purpose or how a anchor trolley works, great videos on that. But basically, you can slide the anchor position, bow and stern, and uh, it allows you to either face into or away from the wind, and it get much less of the swing back and forth that you traditionally get in a canoe or a kayak. So I already kind of talked about this seat support I built. In the front here, I just have a little piece of string that I can clip things onto. And I have a port bag uh, from my canoe that I uh, just put here. I'm having trouble opening it with one hand. So I'll put things like uh, gloves or uh, cool towels, you know, whatever you want in here. Uh, it slides under the seat when I'm not using it. And there's a ton of storage under this seat. I should have mentioned that before. So I also keep a dry box under there for my phone, my keys, my iPod or whatever. I usually carry a waterproof speaker uh, in here and listen to some music. Uh, I've got a light, I've got some zip ties, some plastic bags, and uh, this controller. So for lights, for me, I just want something simple. I haven't Velcroed these down yet, but I've got a three pack of these on Amazon for about 10 bucks. They're submersible puck lights for like a pond or a pool, and they're pretty bright. You just turn them on, You there's colors and uh, strobe effect if you want it, or flashing, or uh, the, the light density you can adjust on here. Uh, so this is plenty of light for me, and I just keep the controller, which is not waterproof, 
in there and slide under the seat. With the padding on the flooring extending under the seat allows you to put things here and they pretty much don't slide around, but more important, you don't have the plastic on plastic noise. So that's been a positive for me. On this gear track, uh, you can do whatever you want, but I, I've mounted a camera holder. It's got a, what do they call this, quarter 20 mount if I want to put a camera on here or I can mount a GoPro. I've got a cup holder. I added a small Scotty track here uh, with a, uh, I think it's Yak Attack, a retractable leash that I put my fishing pliers on. So I'm a Virgo, so I like everything neat and organized. It's overpriced for what it is. Uh, there's other ways of doing it, other places you could put it, uh, but it's plenty long, easy to reach, and gets back to me for, you know, when I catch a northern or if I have some uh, uh, a need for my fishing pliers. Again, I haven't mounted these yet. I'm gonna put some Velcro so they're temporary uh, and put these puck lights on here. Uh, you just unscrew the back, and I think it's three AAA batteries it runs on. Uh, I don't know how long it's going to last yet, but for three tri AAA batteries, I, I really don't care, even if I get six, eight hours out of it. So I'm going to temporarily mount these with Velcro right in these spots since I don't use it. Uh, I've got another Gro GoPro mount that I've put here. So that's that side. We'll come around the other side. Like I said, this rod holder, it's nice, but there's no way to lock it in. It's not tight. I, I don't use it at all. So on this gear track, I've got a Scotty uh, transducer mount, and I love this thing. So it's got some rubber kind of friction pads. So all you have to do is unloosen this, twist it up. It's a little hard to do with one hand. And I can mount it out of the way when I'm la launching, so I'm not bashing this in shallow water. When I want to deploy it, just loosen it and then tighten it down. It comes with this uh, mount here that I usually will put a uh, rod holder in and then I've got a ram mount thing I think this is for cell phones or something but it works great for my personal fish finder to uh, you just kind of squeeze these and it opens up but this mounts is the display unit for the fish finder so I can have this thing in about 20 seconds I can unscrew it and I can have this out of the kayak when I'm on vacation, I'll usually just flip this up and I'll leave the transducer on the boat, but I will always take this out and not leave it there. Now on the handles on both sides, I've got these little, uh, I think they're night eyes, these little carabiner tie-offs. And on this side, I will put uh, maybe a, a leech tote or my stringer, I'll clip it on and to just get it long enough to get down into the water, I'll clip it on here, it holds. I have the identical one on the other side, that anchor line, when I run it out and hit bottom, I'll actually just pull the anchor line into this recess and it locks it in enough to hold me. And if uh, ever something comes up, a high wave or a wake, or I want to release quickly, just lift the line out. So that's worked very well for me. So, um, you know, I've got a, I don't know if I mentioned, I've got a cup holder on the other side, but there's a million ways to, to rig a, a kayak. Um, but I, I hope some of these ideas might be helpful for you. Uh, there is space to add some more gear tracks if you want to put other accessories on. And um, I'm going to go into a little bit about this fish finder because it has been awesome. I actually, let me go over here. I had an old kind of bolt on for like a rental boat or a canoe uh, screw on rod holder. I just uh, took the side hole, I took that same bar and I made a little holder and my fish finder comes with an adapter here. So uh, you know, if I'm somewhere on a rental boat or I want to use that same fish finder uh, on uh, my canoe, this is how I mount it. Uh, I basically just loosen this rod and this thing can tip up out of the way. But I have found at least at low to moderate speed. it. Uh, just by this uh, crank knob here. Hopefully I'm showing this okay, doing this one-handed. Uh, at slower, moderate speeds, it's been enough to hold this uh, perpendicular and straight up and down in the water. So um, that's kind of my rigging system that works well for me. And like I said, hopefully you pick up a, a nice little idea or tip that can help you out too. And I will uh, talk about that fish finder specifically next. Thanks. Okay, this fish finder that I've mentioned, I found it on Amazon. Um, 
and it comes uh, this is like a handheld this doesn't come with it or it's uh, the unit itself uh, you've got the transducer it's got the uh, the mount that I showed you and it comes with a, a float here too which you could just throw it over the side or that works handy for ice fishing okay anyways I, I'm really happy with this it runs on four triple-a batteries uh, and I can run I would guess I've never really timed it but you know eight plus hours on one set of four triple-a batteries um, size wise you know it's kind of kind of cell phone size and um, the screen is has multiple colors it's actually been very easy to read it's not backlit so at night or certain glare it's maybe not the best but it's been totally functional for me pretty rugged I've had that about four years now um, the brand and mostly all over it just says fish finder the brand is not available I don't know if you can see that on Amazon anymore uh, but it's sign stack s i g n s t s t e k f f double o three um there's similar ones available i think this one i think i paid like 60 or 70 bucks for uh lucky brand i probably wouldn't get the 30 dollar one see if there's another model but um as you can see the the packaging it just says portable fish finder and nowhere on the back says it says say that sign stick but uh here's some of the specifications if you want to pause and take a look at that so listen it's not high end there's much better fish finders out there but for cost and ease of use and ease of deployment this system has worked very well for me so i hope you find it helpful okay so i'm going to wrap this up i'm sure it's getting pretty long so hopefully you have found this information for the king sport or the boss 12 or ozark whatever the walmart brand is i hope you found it helpful uh, for decision making process for deciding if you want to buy it some of the pros and cons and the layout maybe get an idea on how I've rigged it um, how I've addressed the seat issue things of that nature uh, if there's any questions put them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them uh, but it's been a, a really positive kayak I'm, I'm glad I got it I'm sure I'll upgrade to maybe a pedal drive or something in a in a few years but for starting this has been great for me um, I'm really enjoy like wilderness canoeing and kayaking and fishing. So if there's questions about that that I can help with, uh, let me know and I'll try to address them. Uh, I may do follow up videos on our pelicans here, um, how I can fish them. I've done some very minor modifications on mine, uh, things of that nature. Uh, part of the fleet, I don't know if you can see up there, I've got an old Alumacraft aluminum canoe. That's for 20 years what I fished out of up there. Um, I still prefer a canoe when I'm up there with uh, someone else as a friend, but for my solo trips, which I'm doing more and more nowadays, uh, the kayak for where I'm going and what I've been doing has been outstanding. So again, thanks for watching. I hope you found some helpful information. Uh, if you got any questions, just uh, hit me up. Have a good one.